Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Today's show, we're going to be talking about CRM, Customer Relationship Management, but specifically, we're going to talk about considerations to be made when we implement it. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about CRM today and specifically um, considerations we want to make. If, if you're in, the, you're in the, uh, the spot right now where you're thinking about CRM, implementing CRM, maybe you want to take CRM to the next level, what are some of those considerations you should be thinking about in that process? We have a guest today. We have Joe Steffen, Director of CRM and Technology for Concept. He's returning back to the show. And uh, he's going to walk us through some of the things that he gets involved with from a partner standpoint, from an implementation standpoint. So, Joe, welcome, welcome to the show Thank, again. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Yeah. So, um, would it be accurate to say that CRM right now is kind of on an upswing? It is. It's uh, it's a pretty pretty hot button topic for a lot of organizations that we work with today. And in light of uh, COVID nineteen, you know, a lot of companies who have moved to a, a remote workforce are starting to identify a lot of inefficiencies within their systems. And uh, as a result, you know, our, our project work has um, has uh, has been in abundance recently. We're we're keeping very busy over on our side of, of the business here. Yeah. How much is uh, the COVID nineteen and and people having time right now and sales reps at home how much of that is spurring on companies saying this might be a good time yeah I, I believe you know a majority of the conversations I'm having with new customers and even some existing customers have really been around that um, that that process uh, re as of recently and it's uh, a lot of it sparking from the COVID-19 virus uh, you know I can't tell you how many companies I'm speaking with who are telling me hey Joe we've identified all these holes uh, inefficiencies the system's just simply not set up properly we're not getting actionable reporting that we need we don't know what our salespeople are doing on a day-to-day -day basis um, we just really need some help to get the system set up appropriately so that we can manage our staff remotely. How much, how much of this, I mean, obviously the remote you hit on remotely, how much of this though, do you think is spurred on by companies sitting back and saying, Hey, when we get back to normal, whatever the new norm is, mm -hmm. we have to manage things differently now. Yeah. Not just the remote piece of it, but we're going to have a different strategy. We're going to have a different approach. We're gonna have a different direction. How much of that do you think is playing into, you know, this rise of people wanting to do things? Sure. I, I think, uh, you know, quite a bit, um, you know, from our customers today. Um, I don't think the landscape of, of how companies are doing business is really going to go back to normal for a while. Um, you know, I, I think that with companies taking advantage of the downtime they have now to reevaluate their tech stack, what's being done within their solutions, um, it's going to have a huge impact downstream for them as well. They'll be able to take those new business practices, those new best practices and how the system is set up. And, uh, you know, when things do get back to normal, they'll be able to apply those to their organization really to help them continue to drive additional sales and manage their processes efficiently. You've been involved in CRM for a while. Yeah. So uh, going on a little over 10 years now. Maybe give me a little little history of how you got started in CRM and obviously you must enjoy it. Right? Yeah. You've been in it for a while. Sure. So um, actually uh, started off my career in network engineering, uh, desktop support, and uh, then I moved into sales. So it was kind of a, a, a different path there. And I did sales for a few years. And Didn't want to hang out in sales? Well, it was fun for me, but, uh, you know, I found my way back to the tech space and uh, I seem to enjoy that a lot more. And actually with my job today, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of everything, which is nice. Um, so I worked in the golf industry for a little while doing sales. And then I actually started working um, for an act consultant uh, here in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And I did that for about six years. So we were the primary hosting provider for all ACT for Web I customers. Grew, I grew up on ACT. Yeah, it's a great platform. A lot for of years. small businesses. Started Concept. Mm -hmm on ACT. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of small companies were using it. It was a great contact management tool. It's been around for, jeez, I believe since the late How 80s. How are they doing now? Do you know? I don't even follow them. Anymore. Yeah. I don't, uh, I haven't seen a lot of new 
major improvements or enhancements to their applications, I think that Salesforce and HubSpot are really tiering on number one and number two in the marketplace, with Dynamics being a close third. But, um, you know, we still come across a few companies who are using ACT, but just not quite as many. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been in uh, you've been in CRM for a while. Mm -hmm. How much of what you I mean, you have a dual role at Concept, right? You have the technology side and CRM side. How much on the CRM side do you get involved in new implementations versus companies that are sitting back saying, you know what, we've had this thing for X amount of time. We're really not using it. It's really time to get this up to par. Sure. Um, it'd be tough to put a, a specific percentage on it, but I could tell you, if you asked me that question two years ago, we probably came across a lot more companies who never had any type of CRM. You know, it was brand new to them. We're doing brand new implementations. And we still come across that, you know, regularly today with our customers. But um, we are having a lot more conversations now with customers who are unhappy with their current CRM or it's simply not set up appropriately. So we need to go in and redesign it and figure out what their goals are, what's not working, where the pain points lie. So, you know, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say it's probably about a 50-50 split right now with our project work and redesigns or migrating away from other CRM solutions um, and brand new setups. Are you seeing a lot of companies actually switch total platforms? Or is it more, hey, let's let's just make what we have work for us? Yeah, we're, we're seeing a little bit of, of both. You know, and that's kind of a tough conversation to have with customers because oftentimes some of the struggles that they have, you know, involve user adoption or the system wasn't set up properly. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if you're using Salesforce or HubSpot or Dynamics. If it's not set up appropriately and you're not adopting it internally, you're going to spend money on any one of those systems and yeah. it's simply not going to work for you. So, you know, we see uh, both sides of it. Uh, a lot of redesigns that we're doing within their existing platforms today, um, but we also see a lot of customers who are switching and trying out different solutions. You would be considered a partner. Mm hmm Right. Kind of explain a little bit what that means, being a partner. Sure. So we actually have partnerships with a lot of different solutions, Salesforce and HubSpot being our primary two. So we're a registered partner of Salesforce. We are a gold partner of HubSpot. We're also a partner of Conga, Cloud Dingo, and a few other add-on applications that are available that integrate with those systems. Um, being a partner of Salesforce, you know, or HubSpot really means that we're working closely with uh, with those solutions, with their account executives, with their partnership network um, to ensure that we're meeting the goals and expectations of our customers. Typically, when Salesforce or HubSpot sells a solution to a customer, you know, oftentimes they're not doing the setup and implementation on their own. They rely on their partner network to come in and actually do the implementation for them and support so are you it. are you primarily getting pulled in once a project sold? Yeah, we actually have been, um, you know, inserted into the sales process with both Salesforce and HubSpot at a variety of different stages. I prefer typically to come in at the early stages of the evaluation. So whether it's a new prospect that I've sourced and I've sent it over to Salesforce or HubSpot, or if they know us as a partner and know what our industry experience is, you know, they would contact us. But we can come in at any stage of the evaluation. It's typically best just to do it from the onset that way between myself and the account executive and solutions engineers, um, you know, at Salesforce or HubSpot, we're all working towards the same common goal to really accomplish our, our customers' needs and get them the right solution. How often are you as a partner, is a prospect saying, Joe, what, what platform should I go to? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or is that kind of decided and you're already, you're just kind of going that. So where do you fall in some of that? Sure. Um, you know, Prior to about a year ago, uh, we were solely a Salesforce partner and add-on solutions that bolted onto that. And, uh, you know, we, we brought on a partnership with HubSpot to help support our digital marketing agency as well. And it's kind of been a, a little bit of a unique situation. What made, you, what made you even consider HubSpot? Yes, yeah, so we looked at a lot of different marketing automation platforms, and there were really only a few that could work for us as a digital marketing agency. So you, you, you looked at HubSpot because you had a specific need you were trying to accomplish. That's correct. We needed a platform that can support multiple customers from a digital marketing perspective. And HubSpot being one of the leaders of those solutions, as we went through the evaluation of that and Pardot and Marketing Cloud and SharpSpring and a number of others, um, 
you know, this particular solution essentially checked most of the things off our list that we needed to do to support our digital marketing. I'm group. assuming Salesforce could do some of that. They could. Yep. Okay. So it was a matter of what fit better? Is that is that kind of what it boils down to? Yeah, Salesforce has two marketing automation solutions, that being Pardot and Marketing Cloud. Pardot isn't really structured um, to, to support a digital marketing agency. Marketing Cloud on the other side of it um, can be structured to do that. But, you know, the analogy I like to use there is Marketing Cloud at the time was really the Ferrari that we didn't need. Um, we just needed an economy car. And, um, you know, HubSpot has far exceeded our expectations. And they're actually the leader in marketing automation. Do you think by design HubSpot came in at a specific place in the market? Yeah, you know, they they really started off as a marketing automation platform and then developed a CRM solution, whereas Salesforce the other way, complete opposite, right? They started as a CRM platform and backed into marketing automation platforms. So, you know, we oftentimes when we're evaluating marketing automation tools for our customers, we're giving them both options. You know, here's Pardot, here's HubSpot, here's how they can work for you. How do you do that as a partner? Yeah. When so Salesforce pulls you in mm -hmm. and you're sitting back saying, or vice versa, HubSpot's pulling you in. Right. How do you balance through that? Yeah, it's uh it's been a you know a, a different situation to try to sure. navigate through over the past several months and we've had a number of i'm those. thinking as a partner you you got two masters right a little bit right yeah. you're a partner of these two so i, I want to support them this guy over here the cost customer he's paying the bill yep Right. And that puts you in a kind of a, a rough spot at times. It does, you know, but at the end of the day, from a partnership perspective, what we're looking to do is ensuring our customer has the best possible solution to meet their goals and their needs. OK, you know, um, so during that evaluation process, we're going through a deep dive analysis of what they need to have within their organization to make it work appropriately for them. OK, so Salesforce can come in and, you know, they'll they'll let them know, hey, here are the tools and functions and features that we can offer you. And HubSpot does the same thing. But at the end of the day, as a partner, we go back and have a conversation with the customer and say, hey, you know, we've listened to all of your needs and you know there are certain circumstances where both systems can accommodate your your goals and your needs within the platform and if that's the case it really just comes down to price and then both companies essentially are, are battling and negotiating against one another to, to get the best price for the customer but if there's one that's just a clear-cut winner it says hey this is checking more things off your list than this and that's a solution we're going to recommend Do you find a lot in those situations that usually there is a clean cut favorite based on the customer's need to be honest um you know it's there hasn't there there have been a few scenarios where that's been the case um you know but oftentimes at least on the marketing automation side of things it's been very difficult to find key features or components that matter to an organization to say, this is the better platform versus this one. You know, oftentimes when, when pinning up marketing automation platforms against each other, it's really coming down to price. And when you're pinning up CRMs against each other, Salesforce, I believe, has a lot more robust features and customizations that can work well for certain types of organizations. But then there are certain organizations who don't need all those bells. They and don't whistles. need a Ferrari. Exactly. Very good. You mentioned uh, that there's a lot of customers that you're working with that um, maybe it, it, it wasn't implemented good or mm -hmm. they're not using it. How often are you seeing prospects and customers, they, they blame the previous partner? Very frequently. You know, uh, I would say there's a pretty common theme when having those conversations where my system was never set up appropriately and it's because we didn't have a great working relationship with our partner they really didn't understand our industry they didn't understand our needs or you know they're letting us know that hey you know this person within our organization was pulled away from their typical job function and they've been pulled in as an admin to administer this platform to our company where they don't really have the product knowledge that they need in order to have a successful implementation. So I'm I'm seeing a little bit of both of those scenarios. Yeah. Do you sit back at times when you hear that and you dig in? I got to believe at times, sometimes you sit back and say, I'm not sure that was all the partners. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe you weren't set up internally. Like you said, you didn't have a champion inside or somebody qualified to run this 
this project. Maybe. Of course. Yeah. And if, if they decide to go with us as a partner, obviously we uncover a lot of those things pretty quick, but you know, there are a number of different factors that can go into, um, you know, an unsuccessful implementation or needing to redesign the application. And that could be from a few things that you mentioned there, they didn't have a champion internally. There was no one at the wheel to really drive the adoption, drive the process. It's gotta be important. 100%, you know, very important. Um, if you don't have buy-in from the top down, your adoption's never going to be there. How does a customer pick a partner? Mm -hmm. I have to believe there's a good partner. I have to believe there's a lot of good partners, yep. but then there's the right partner. Sure. How does a customer find a find the right partner? Yeah, so there are a couple different channels that customers can go to to really search for their partners. And I'll get into some of the specifics in terms of what they should look for in a partner. But, you know, a lot of our partner, or I'm sorry, our, our customers or prospects are coming to us, either they're doing some self-searching on Google, they're visiting our app exchange listing. Um, and we use digital marketing internally to drive traffic uh, to our website. And it's the appropriate type of traffic. So we tailor our SEO and pay-per-click solutions to make sure that hey, if someone's looking for Pardot in this specific industry, that we're the right partner for so you're them. you're not just looking for implementations, you're looking for the right. Correct. Yeah, we, we don't work in healthcare. We, we don't work in government. We don't work in financials. And, you know, at this point, we really don't want to. So we're, we're looking for the right customers and we tailor our marketing efforts to that. Um, also, the partnership network is, a, is another channel. You know, the account executives at Salesforce and HubSpot, that's another channel that we typically like to work with um, to ensure that they're recommending the right partners for their customers. Now, both groups have very extensive partner networks out there. Um, you know, it's our job to educate them, to let them know what we're capable of doing, what industries we specialize in, and how we can assist the customer. You spend a lot of time uh, with Salesforce and HubSpot? I do, yeah. Um, I, I probably have a conversation with a new account executive almost on a weekly basis. I'm, I'm constantly- a new account. New like, account executive, yeah. There's- there Because, <laughs> like- there are thousands of them, you know, there are thousands. Because oh, it could be a new territory correct. or a new market. Or, yeah, they, okay. they shift territories, they shift markets, um, you know. They grow within the organization. Exactly, exactly. So we have some developed relationships with certain account executives. You know, I think that's become a little bit harder just with the sheer size of these organizations now. Um, and, and they don't really stay in their territory as often as they used to, right? Uh, eight months, 12 months in, they're moving on to a new position or they're transitioning to a different territory. So it's been a little bit more difficult to develop yeah. those relationships. But you got to do it. You have to, you know, that's, that's important. And I have to believe that's a competitive thing for you as a partner, because you got other partners that they're also vying for that that account execs yep. time and, you know, recommendation, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's extremely competitive. And, you know, I focus on what we know and what we do best. So again, I'm, I'm not out there selling smoke or, or solutions to account executives. Like I'm not selling it to customers to say, hey, we <clears throat> specialize in this or, we, you know, this is our niche. These are our industries. Here's what we've completed. I provide case studies and customer testimonials and blogs and video content, whatever else I can provide to them to make them comfortable with us so that when they're having a conversation with the customer, they say, oh, you know, I know concept. They specialize in uh, capital equipment and um, they work heavily in the dealer and manufacturer space. And I think that they would be a great partner for this particular prospect I'm working with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the customer side of things, I, I believe there are, are a few key components that they need to consider. Before you get in there, sure. from a customer standpoint, is most often... Salesforce, HubSpot, Microsoft, are they mainly bringing the partner to the prospect? Is there, is, for example, is the, is the, uh, uh, the CRM company, Salesforce, mm -hmm. are they pretty much saying, hey, I think this is the partner you should go with? Yeah, it's, you know, um, it depends on the organization and who the account executive is. Um, we used to see a lot more of that where, um, you know, the account executive was really bringing the partner into the mix and saying, this is the the partner you should be using for this. Or I'd like to give you a few recommendations I'd like you to meet with with these partners. Um, but I've also seen, especially over the past year, year and a half, where a lot of customers are kind of self-evaluating, right? They have all the tools and resources at their disposal now on Google and all these white papers, and they can go and look at the solution before they even contact an account executive. Oftentimes, we get a call first as a partner to say, oh. 
hey, I'm looking at the solution. I'd like to learn a little bit more about it. I'm not ready to start the conversation with the solution provider yet, but I'd like to know what you're all so about. it's not always going to the solution provider and then to you. It could go to you and then correct the other way. Yep. Yeah, we, we see it. Uh, we see it happen both ways. So you, you were starting to talk a little bit about from a, from a prospect standpoint, how do they know they got the, I have to believe there's a lot of Joes out there, right? There's yep. a lot of concepts out there. Right. How do you, how do you qualify that down? Yeah. So I think there are a few key components that uh, customers need to look at when going through their partnership and, and vendor selection to implement the solution. I believe one of the biggest ones is, um, you know, product knowledge, right? What are the solutions I'm looking to implement within Salesforce or HubSpot and how comfortable and how many projects have they completed? And, you know, do they have testimonials out there and case studies out there? So all the materials that they have at their disposal to go and review prior to, to selecting a partner. I also believe that industry experience is extremely important. Um, you know, partners could spend, you know, weeks or, or months delaying a project, delaying, you know, uh, spending additional cost and time to an organization trying to learn their business processes. And if you find someone who has experience within their industry, that really streamlines the whole process. So I'm a prospect, I'm talking to a partner and I say, hey, you got experience in, in what we're doing. And they say, oh yeah, I've done this. How's a prospect go deeper than that though? How do I validate what you tell me is true as a partner? Sure. You know, it's, it's really, um, we can provide uh, customer referrals and references over to them. As I mentioned, we have a, a lot of different case studies that we put together. I think that's one of the biggest benefit a partner can do is when they complete a project, validate that project. Now, hey, I, I'm working with this particular um, manufacturing company, let's say, and um, this is what Concept helped us with. This is what our, our business problem was. And, um, you know, provide that material over to them. Let them validate it. If they'd like to speak with an existing customer, I mean, allow them to do that as well. But, you know, communication is also extremely important. I think you develop a certain rapport with, uh, with the prospect that you're speaking with and uncovering their needs and just having that high level conversation from the onset to know pretty quick if you as a company are going to be comfortable with them as a yep. prospect and make sure that you have a, an appropriate. So you got to hit it off personality wise. Exactly. And then they got to have um, relative experience in your industry, yep. right? Even application experience on mm -hmm. your specific application maybe that you're trying to do. Exactly right. So there's several things they could be looking for. Yes. Yeah. What do you see in the implementations you get involved with, what are some struggles companies run into mm -hmm. or what didn't maybe they prepare for or what would be those things that would cause an implementation to go south? Sure. Well, it's our job as an implementation partner to ensure that that doesn't happen or, or minimize it as much as possible. But, um, you know, obviously one of the biggest things that we see is just user adoption. Um, we can do everything in our power to plan for a successful user adoption rollout with the group after the project's gone live. And we do everything from, you know, we start planning at the early stages of the project. And that, that covers everything from having a, a structured rollout plan in place, detailed outline of what's going to be built, how it's going to be built, making sure we're automating as much as we can for the group and for the users, giving the users a platform. To, to speak and stand on to say, hey, this is working for us, this isn't working for us, and having a pretty structured training module uh, and ongoing training set up with our customers. But I'd say user adoption could uh, could certainly make a uh, an implementation go sideways or, or not be as successful as we want. Um, you know, expectations and timeline are also extremely important. Uh, I always am as transparent as possible with our customers. I like to, um, you know, I, I like to always make sure that they're aware of what our capabilities are, how much time it's going to take to actually build out these solutions and ensure that those expectations how are How big set. is the gap between what you know is reality and what the prospect is expecting? How often is there a 
they're a big gap. There. It, it happens actually quite often. You know, a, a lot of companies who go to purchase a solution uh, look at it and say, okay, well, you know, I'm bringing on Salesforce. That's great. I'm not expecting it's going to take a month or two months or three months to actually implement. You know, they could have uh, conceptually a lot of goals in mind in terms of what they'd like to build out. I'd like to integrate it with my financial system. I'd like to make sure my sales process is sound. I'd like to make sure my customer service team is in here. But, you know, at the end of the day, you really have to break it out in phases. You have to take a crawl, walk, run approach when you have a, a situation like that. And then you have to set those expectations. Do they want to run right away? They do. Most of the time they do. And it's it's our job to kind of you know go through a little bit of a reality check and let them know hey, each one of these phased approaches is going to take. What do you think is driving time. they want to run right away? What's well, driving that? Yeah, I think it's uh, first, you know, excitement about the new solution. Um, you know, we have this new shiny tool that we're putting into our business and we'd like to get it set up <clears throat> as quick as possible. But also, you know, there's a cost behind that, right? They're paying for the licenses. They've signed the contract with Salesforce or HubSpot. They want to make sure it's up and running as, as quick as possible. And they, they'd like their users in the platform as quick as possible. In your implementations, do you see, um, is there a common application? Like um, you talked about sales and better managing sales reps and that type of thing. But I mean, CRM can be used for lots of applications. Mm -hmm. But are you seeing a common denominator in people's interest to want to get it integrated? Yeah, 100%. I would say probably 95% of our customer base today and, and uh, almost 100% of the prospects that we speak with today, you know, have an interest of integrating CRM with another business application. CRM is no longer just a sales management tool. Um, right. Within Salesforce and within HubSpot, they have a variety of different solutions. There's Service Cloud for customer service management. There's CPQ for advanced quoting. There's um, even a manufacturing cloud and healthcare cloud. And there are all these different add-on applications within the ecosystem that can be bolted on to, to Salesforce or HubSpot as well. Um, you know, I can tell you internally, we use Salesforce for sales management, account management, HR functions, project management, and all of our financials. So essentially, we've gotten it to a point where all of our business applications are in one centralized locations. And I think, you know, a lot of customers are realizing that I don't want to have 20 different business systems out there. I'd okay. like everything. If, if I have a few, that's fine. But I'd like them all to be integrated to ensure the data is moving back and forth. And that's a lot to bite off. It is. Yeah. Right. That's a lot to bite off for a customer who says, Yep, I got my license. Let's get going. And you're talking that that stuff's not three months to do, right? Right. Yeah, we it's not. Um, you know, that that all comes with process and change management for a customer. Again, we typically recommend for the customer that you take that crawl, walk, run approach. I think if we outline your goals for this project, whether it's on the sales side or customer service side, but Let's focus on that. Let's get your lead process in place. Let's get your opportunity process in place. Let's get the whole management of the system. Let's drive some adoption. Make sure your users are comfortable with the system. And then we can start to incorporate other divisions and businesses within your organization. You know, I... I I don't believe that Salesforce is ever going to be, or HubSpot, CRM in general, is ever going to be just a solution that I'm going to turn on and let yeah. it go. You, you can't really do that. If you're going to grow as an organization, you really have to develop. It, do you think even in today that there's still a little bit of a mentality out there from some companies that I buy it and just teach me how to use it? Does that still exist a little bit? A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the providers themselves being Salesforce and HubSpot and Dynamics have done a pretty great job in, in educating the marketplace and, um, you know, partnerships and everyone within this ecosystem. They, they've all done a, a great job in educating, you know, the customers that are out there today to let them know that, this is not a system that's that's in a uh, in a tunnel, right, or in a bubble. Um, this is a system that you can really grow with, get a three hundred and sixty degree view of your customer, and bring all of your applications. If the in. scale was one to ten, mm -hmm. ten meaning the market is most informed, zero being they're the least informed. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the industry is now? When I talk about the industry, I'm talking about the prospect side of it. Where do you think their understanding or education of CRM is on that scale of one to 10? I would say if, if you were to ask me how many companies out there are familiar with CRM, maybe have used it at one job or another and know some of the baseline functionalities, I'd probably say it's 
eight or nine. You know, um, if you were to ask me how many customers out there are familiar with all the different features and functions and integrations that can be done with a CRM and how you can bring all of your business applications into one platform, I'd probably say maybe a four or five. So you got two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And obviously, if you bring in everything in and you bring in all this integration, that definitely helps from the user adoption, right? Because yep. now we got one place for all of our employees to go to for whatever. Exactly. But it just takes some time to get there. Yep. So as these customers are they're they're vetting out partners and then uh, you know they're they're starting this implementation. What are some hurdles they run into in that process? Like you started with a prospect. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've scoped some things out. And even during that scoping process, how often do you run into things where they say, well, I want to do this, and you look at it and say, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And then you, and you bring in some experience to say, here's, here's what I think. Right. How often does that stuff happen? Uh, quite often, you know, it's our job to really be um, as transparent as possible with our customers. Uh, I can't tell you... How many times I've had to go back and have an uncomfortable conversation with a prospect or a customer to let them know, hey, I understand what you're looking to do here, but this system just simply isn't going to accomplish that or this is not the right way of of going about it. And that could very well mean loss of project work for us. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think the honesty portion of that is so important to the customer. You're going to be a real partner. Exactly. We, We need to be a trusted partner. We need to be able to have those open conversations back and forth with one another to let them know because the next time they're evaluating a solution, they're going to come to us and say, Joe, I need your help. How much of that is part of your get to know them, them get to know you at the onset? Yeah, it's a big set in the X. Because you mentioned a little bit a few minutes ago about expectation or lack of expectation or that type. How much of that takes place up front to set the stage? A, a vast majority of it. You know, when, when I'm having that initial conversation uh, with a new prospect, I'm giving them an overview of our company. They let I let them know what our capabilities are, where our experience lies, and then we're really diving into some of the specifics of what they need. But I'm making sure that expectation is set from the onset because if not – then I don't want to waste their time. And obviously, I don't want them to waste mine either. We want to make sure it's a good fit from the first conversation. I've been on the prospect side a lot, Mm -hmm. not just in CRM, but in other dealings being in business. It's easy at times to say, they just want my business, Mm -hmm. right? They'll do whatever I say. They just want the revenue. They don't care. They're not really helping me. From the partner standpoint, you don't just want the business. Walk me through how important is it for you, and I'm assuming it is, how important is it for you that you have, when I say you, you, your company, has a successful implementation, and why is that important to you? Sure. So I'm looking to develop long-term relationships with our partners. I'm not looking for a quick, simple project or even a, a large project and say, yeah, we're, we're going to finish this up and we're done with concepts. So you know, I'm looking for long-term growth and partnership with our customers. So again, you know, I'm, I'm going to echo what I said before. It's extremely important for us to make sure expectations are set. We're providing consultation where necessary and we're being transparent with our partners and our customers from the onset, regardless if it you know yields me a, a smaller project from the onset, I know they're going to be a longtime customer moving forward. And that's my goal, right? We, we want to have long-term relationships with our partners uh, you know that, that are working in these systems. And how important is it for you with Salesforce, HubSpot, that you have successful implementations? Yeah, that's uh, extremely important. Uh, The two top priorities I have within my division are, number one, customer satisfaction, and two is employee satisfaction. And I think if you get both of those working in harmony, it's a, a, a recipe for a successful Salesforce or HubSpot practice. So, you know, on the customer success side of things, um, you know, we we very, very rarely have customer issues, nor do we have any botched implementations. And I'm going to pat our, our team on the back here for making sure that, that that doesn't take place. But if there is an issue, we do everything that we can to make sure that's right fitted, um, you know, for the customer. But having a successful implementation on whatever system we're working in is extremely important to us to ensure our customers are happy and they're satisfied with the work that was completed yeah we started talking a little bit and i I think i interrupted you but we started talking a little bit about some of the hurdles Mm -hmm. 
companies can run into during this implementation or pre-implementation. And continue that thought a little bit, because I think it's important for companies to think about prior to starting, what, what are these things I better be considering? Sure before I move down this path. Yeah, I think, you know, some of the important things that organizations don't do when evaluating and going through an implementation process is um, really sitting down and having conversations and collaborating internally and with the partners that you're working with to know what are our real goals behind this. Like, you know, I can have a conversation with a prospect and they can tell me, well, I want to improve sales. Okay, well, great. How are we going to do that? You know, where are the real pain points within your sales process? Process. What else can we do to improve upon this? What can we automate for you? So really putting a lot of thought and collaboration internally with your group, I think is key um, to ensuring a successful implementation. And I do see some organizations that, that you know, don't really do that. They kind of throw something against the wall and see if it sticks. And that's never a recipe for, um, you know, for success there. Um, so having a detailed action plan in terms of where you're looking to, and that can shift and change a million different ways by the time it's all said and done, that's fine. But having a detailed action plan in terms of how you want to roll this out, what our main expectations and goals are, um, you know, th all of those things combined will definitely set you up for success. How often are you running into situations where maybe the prospect doesn't have a lot of those processes defined? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the reasons they want to do this because they think it's going to help them. But the reality of it is, is whether I'm using HubSpot or, or Microsoft or sales, uh, Salesforce, it doesn't really matter in many cases sure. right? if I don't have a process. So how often are you having to help just to find the process for them? That comes up very frequently. Um, a very large percentage of the implementations that we do, you know, from our initial conversations is, I really don't have specific goals, KPIs, metrics, or processes that are defined for our sales team or our service team or whatever the case may be. So as a partner, it's our job to provide that consultation over to them say, hey, you know, we've worked heavily in your industry and here's how. So a prospect doesn't need to sit back and say, hey, I'm not going to pursue this until I define all of this. They could leverage a partner to help them through that process. Exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's um, you know, one of the the... The main benefits of using a partner is finding someone who can provide that consultation and be that sounding board for you and really have those open conversations with your organization to say, hey, no problem. If you don't have the processes defined, let us help you get there. Right. Um, you know, we, we don't want to just be task pushers for our, for our customers. We don't want them to say, Joe, I just need you to build this report. OK, great. We'll go and build it for you. But what value is that really bringing to the table if you don't have any processes behind it? So let us explain why we should look at this report in a couple of different ways. And here's what you should be looking at from a management perspective or a sales perspective or a customer service perspective. Sure. How important is it for you? as a partner when you're done that there's a very clear handoff process yes yeah who's taking it now that it's done right yep. who's running this thing right walk me through a little bit about what that looks like from your perspective and maybe what a prospect out there should be considering Maybe once the implementation is done, what do I, the prospect, got to be ready for? Yep. And that's all part of setting those expectations at the onset of the project and really having those conversations early on because, you know, we don't want to just finish an implementation and say, here you go. Good luck. Right. We, we want to be that partner to continue to help support it. But we also need you internally to pick up some of the slack there and administer a few things and make sure policies are being put in place and processes are being put in place internally. So a lot of that's defined from the onset. Having a very strategic uh, rollout plan in place is important as well. So, you know, uh, everything from training, uh, you know, and rolling out to a pilot group, then doing maybe a phase training, depending on the size of the organization, you can do a phase training with the rest of the users or by division. And then from there, executing on that handoff process to say, okay, we've had your IT department heavily involved in this and we've provided some admin training for you. And, you know, here are some of the functions that you're going to be taking on moving forward for new setups and, and things like that. And here's what concepts going to continue to work on for you. Um, so having some clear defined responsibilities after a project is completed is extremely important. So it's not just, hey, we're done. Right. This should work. Yep. 
right? From your perspective, do you find a particular role inside of a company is the is a a good person to kind of become that champion then or that person to take the hand off? Is there a good function inside of a company to do that? It really varies. Um, oftentimes, it's someone in a um, sales management role. It could be someone in a marketing management role. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, um, you know just a, a sales rep, but acts as, as somewhat of a leader to their group. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, the, the people that they have within their IT organization. I think, um, you know, that that's probably a little bit less um, normal than, you know, passing it off to someone in the sales role. But it just really depends on what's being built in the solution for which departments and divisions. Yeah. But mostly it, it'd be sales or marketing professionals. I'm assuming throughout that process, you get to know that personnel pretty well oh, internally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, most certainly. I mean, uh, we're typically communicating with them, uh, you know, weekly touch base calls, if not uh, a couple times a week, um, you know, communication back and forth via email, phone, through our project management system. So, you know, we get to know each other pretty well. Yeah. I'm a prospect. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to implement CRM. I come to you and, and you and I are out on a Friday night and we're talking and I say, Joe, hey, I'm <clears throat> kind of thinking about implementing CRM. What do, you, what do you think? I Where do I start? Sure. What do I, what do I do? Tell, where do I start? Yeah. So I think what you need to do first is really evaluate what are our high level goals with the CRM, right? If, if I don't currently have a CRM in place today, then, you know, why don't I have a CRM? What are some of my, my uh, pain points within, let's just say my sales process. All right. Am I having a hard time forecasting? Do I not know what's in my pipeline? Do we just have, you know, we're spending an abundant amount of money on leads and we have no idea what's happening with them. Do we just have data all over the place? So really honing in and, and zoning in on what your overall goals are with the project, I think is probably the first starting point that, uh, that any customer needs to look at. And then from there, you can really start to develop a plan and process around that, right? Determining what are my business requirements? What are the key features I'm looking for? What are my nice to haves? Uh, what partner am I going to utilize to make this a successful uh, platform? What's my budget look like? What does my timeline look like? Um, you know, do I have staff internally that's going to help administer this, develop it? Uh, do I have champions internally? So there's a number of different questions, you know, within that evaluation process that, that organizations should be looking at. But I think really zoning in first, what's my business problem? Yeah. I, I think that's really the first key starting point that you have to look at. And, you know, um, and it's not easy. It's not. Because it, that, that, that's, a, I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of things. Mm -hmm. What's my goal? Well, is my goal around leads? Is my goal around I got a bunch of data? I got to manage it, right? Where, where's my, am I, am I managing a pipeline? What, right? I need to track my sale. There's a lot of things there. So just defining your goal alone is, it's not an easy thing to do. It is. And, you know, I think it's important for organizations, if you don't have um, a clear cut understanding of where your pain points lie or what your potential goals could be, um, you know, that's where collaboration becomes extremely important. You need to have conversations internally to see what other people within your own division or even outside of your division are experiencing. And then you should really start having those conversations with partners and with the solution providers, because you simply don't know what you don't know about the platform. You don't know what it's capable of, what it can do for you. But, you know, having a lot more of those conversations, really taking your time with that evaluation um, is really going to help shed some light in terms of you as a, a prospect learning what the system's capable of and how we can accomplish that goal within the platform. Yeah. Would it be safe to say if you haven't defined some of those things, don't move down the process of implementing this yet? I would. You, you don't really want to make more problem, more problem and that large of an investment into a solution without having those items defined because Salesforce and HubSpot are not cheap implementing the solutions not really cheap, yeah. you know, so you Plus it causes frustration to people. A hundred percent. Companies saying use it and they're saying, well, for what? Right. 
right? I don't even know how. Yep. And you don't want to have a bad experience the first time you go to implement a CRM. So next time that does come up that you're you're not shying away from the process, right? You're embracing it next time to say, okay, maybe my processes have become stagnant or we've grown out of this system. I've gone through this evaluation before. I know what to expect. Now let me go look at what's new, what's out there, what solutions we can accommodate with our new processes. And yeah. I, I think that's important too. How important is it for a company when they're implementing to be looking long term? to like where am I going like yeah. you mentioned a lot of things they want to look at right now mm -hmm. but is part of the process hey I do want to integrate um, I do want this down the road I do want that down the road I want to add this function now how big of that is part of the process that you should define up front as well Yep. I don't think every every specific detail needs to be clearly defined, but you do need to look for long-term growth. You need the roadmap. Yes. Where am I looking to go as an organization? Right now, let's say I have 50 employees. By this time next year, I'm forecasting to have 100 employees. I want 50, 50%, 100% growth within my company. I need to make sure I have a system that's set up um, in such a way that can accommodate that growth. And what are the other business applications that I currently have within my ecosystem today that I would would like to potentially integrate. So getting those ideas down on paper as you're at the early stages of the implementation and as you're going through it are extremely important. Who do you primarily work with? What functional role mm -hmm. is, is primarily your contact? Sure. It's um, typically a um, sales management professional, um, a marketing uh, professional, um, or some in some certain uh, circumstances, it could be, uh, you know, uh, folks who work in the IT department. Has there been anything that you've seen change over the last X month, years, where marketing is becoming more involved than sales? Is there any change going there on marketing's role versus sales role? relative to CRM? Um, we're starting to see a lot more synergies between okay. those departments. So we're starting to bring in, you know, if we were primarily working with sales manager over here, well, you know, we're now starting to work with marketing department. Why is that, you think? Well, I think that, um, you know, first of all, they're, they're starting to, after sales has implemented CRM, they're starting to get comfortable in the system. I, and naturally, we see an evolution of marketing starting to, to be brought into the fold, right? So they're now evaluating as a phase two or phase three marketing automation platform. I'm seeing a lot more companies going to a digital marketing strategy now as well. Um, so they're leveraging everything from Google ads and SEO and targeted uh, account-based marketing and, you know, email campaigns and chat management and website and driving traffic to your website for form submissions. So there's all these different components that go into that. Um, and all of that really ties directly into CRM. And it also ties into sales processes, right? So we're starting to see a lot more synergies now um, with some of the software and technology that we have available to us today between sales and marketing. And that's yeah. really opening up the door to more conversations with yeah. marketing groups. I, I think I would agree with that. I mean, I think that's what I hear and that's what I see. Mm -hmm. You know, marketing and sales, um, they're becoming one. Yes. Marketing's almost becoming another sales arm. Mm -hmm. It's not marketing anymore. It's you need to generate sales. Right. Right before it was generate impression and market awareness and prep. I mean, that's still part of it, but really marketing needs to be generating sales. Correct. I would think, and you, if you disagree, share, I would think if a company is implementing or considering implementing CRM, I would think they want to look at it holistically mm -hmm. from a marketing standpoint and a sales standpoint. You know, when you talk about Salesforce has its strengths here, HubSpot has its strengths here, and I'm sure Microsoft, right, Dynamics has its strengths here. They all have their strengths, right? Right. I think if I'm a new prospect, and I've been at this a long time in CRM as well, not to the level that you are, I'm not an implementer of it, but I would think you want to look at this from a 360 degree view, a holistic view yep. of how am I tying all my marketing initiatives and there's a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. We've got all the SEO stuff, all the everything that's driving things internally. How am I tracking that? Right. Right. What's the flow once those leads come through? How am I managing that? What's my follow-up on it? I think that's where all of this needs to go. And if I were offering any suggestions to customer, I'd be saying, man, you 
you want to be looking at it from a holistic viewpoint, not just what are your sales reps. That's 10 years ago CRM. Right. Would you agree with that? 100%. You know, we're seeing that more and more. Like, like you said, I mean, even a few years ago, it was, you know, I'm just focusing on sales processes, lead development, nurturing, pipeline management, maybe some quoting thrown in there. But today our conversations are a lot more of what do your marketing efforts look like? How are you developing and generating those leads today? Who's doing that internally? What resources are you using to, to develop those leads? Yeah. How does that incorporate into your sales process today? And even on the back end, you know, we're also um, not only talking marketing and sales, but we're, we're talking finances as well. How does your business application tie into this? How's your account management team growing their book of business today? Do they have visibility into contract information, transactional data, things like that? So really, like you said, developing that roadmap from the onset is extremely important. You know, I, uh, I shared this in a, 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 an earlier show I did, and, and I find it interesting. Every company has accounting, mm -hmm. right, for all the obvious reasons, right? We need it uh, for all the obvious reasons. But when it comes to sales, when it comes to marketing, we don't even manage near like we do on accounting. Mm -hmm. And to me, it makes no sense. Accounting exists because sales sold something. Exactly. Right? We would not allow our receivables person or our payables person or the person who does invoicing to enter some things in the accounting system and other things not. Right? right? And you go into a meeting and, and the controller says, uh, hey, I'm not sure exactly how much we invoiced because Sally... She only put half of the invoices in the system. Yeah. Right? That doesn't happen. But on the sales side, that's that's still relevant. I mm -hmm. mean, or that's still that's happening all the time, right? right? We we don't force our salespeople to put everything in CRM. Mm -hmm. We don't force marketing to have some system to track everything they're doing to track ROI on that campaign and right. What's how's the market We don't do that. I think if you're not doing that, you're missing the boat. I 100% right? agree. CRM needs to be as critical as accounting. Mm -hmm. It just does. And if it's not, I think companies are missing the boat. You're barking up a tree. You're just, you're just not taking it serious. Yeah. I completely agree. You know, at the end of the day, if, um, you know, if, if uh, let's say me as a sales rep, if, if I didn't close any business this month, well, why didn't I close any business? Well, I have zero activities logged in Salesforce. I have no phone calls that have been made. Well, I can tell my sales manager, yes, I made some phone calls and I sent out some emails, but there are no actionable results there, right? You need those actionable results to take place within the platform in order for you as an individual salesperson, yeah. as well as your sales manager to know what's going on for the organization. How are we going to plan? How are we going to make appropriate business? business decisions moving forward, because without those data points, you simply can't do well, that. I think that's the key. When you said, how do I make appropriate business decisions? How do I, how do, where am I getting the data points? I think sales today, and it's not going to lessen, it's a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more competitive. It's moving much faster than it was even five years ago, even three years ago, definitely more than 10 years ago. I think if companies aren't getting on the bandwagon with CRM and marketing automation and all this digital marketing and all these forms of getting their name out, right, in some strategic fashion, I just don't know if they're going to compete. Right. I don't know if they're going to compete. Yep. And uh, I, I find it fascinating. I think, you know, what you're working in, I, I definitely think that's the future. It, it is. Accounting is accounting. Right. Right. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. Right. And I still balance the debits and the credits. And the sales and marketing side, it's going to constantly be changing because we got to continually find new and better ways of doing things. Right. And uh, so I think it's been interesting. And, and I guess one thing I, I'll, I'll close with you from a partner standpoint. Mm -hmm. What would be that ideal situation when a prospect comes to you and says, this is what I'm looking for. This is what we've done up to this point. I'm ready to go. Yeah. What are those things where you sit back and you say, wow, looks like they've done their homework. Looks like they're ready. Yeah. What's so, that look like? Um, 
having a pretty detailed outline plan in terms of, hey, Joe, this is what our marketing process looks like today. This is what our sales process looks like today. Here's an overview of our current tech stack. Um, you know, here here's how our leads flow. Here's where we're acquiring our leads. Here's what our marketing team is currently looking for. Here's what our sales team is currently looking for. I can go in and, and probe a little bit and ask some additional questions surrounding that. But I think if you have those building blocks to, to really start with and, and kind of a roadmap in terms of just really identifying what's going on within your organization, that's a really good starting point for a customer. And I can, I can take that and run with yeah. it, you know, and, and we can, like I said, probe and scope as, as much as we need to to uncover all the goals that they're going to have within this project and show them how we can build it and develop. But if they're coming with that kind of stuff, you're sitting back as a partner saying, hey, they, they got an idea here yes. of what they're doing. They have an idea of where they're going. It looks as if they're looking at all the important areas. Mm -hmm. So I think they have a realistic expectation. I have to believe that's important for you. 100%. It, it makes my job a lot easier um, having uncovered or, or knowing what that game plan looks like from the onset. Yeah. Well, hey, I want to I want to thank you for for coming in again. Yeah, thanks for I having think, me. I uh, think you know this is hot. This is a hot topic right now. It's not going away in the near future. You know, I think, and it's going to evolve. Right. I think soon as we get our arms around this, the next wave of technology functionality is going to come in, right? And that'll be the new thing, and it'll be the bigger, the better, that type. And it's it's going to evolve, and it's going to continue to evolve. And companies have to jump in, yeah. right? They have to jump in. And I'll tell you that one thing right before we close, I think the other thing companies are up against now, if they don't, if they don't get CRM and marketing automation and technology in general, I think they're going to have a hard time, one, competing. Eventually, they won't compete. They're going to have a hard time recruiting. I agree. The younger generation coming in, they live on this. Right. Right. And I think that's, maybe you can touch this a little bit, but I'm wondering how big of a struggle that is for companies who have this little bit of an older mentality, right? And now they're with, well, I didn't, I never did this in the past. I don't need this. And so they're, they're slow at reacting but it's going to all of a sudden, I think it's going to be here and they're going to go, whoa, I'm, I'm five years behind the times. And they're not going to hire anybody because the people aren't going to be interested in coming to an antiquated process company. Right. Sure. I mean, I could tell you if I was, uh, you know, a new graduate coming out of college and getting into the into the workforce and I work at a company and we use CRM and that's, you know, our, our lifeblood and our business application and, you know, every business process is incorporated into that. And that's how we can function as an organization. Well, let's say in a few months I leave that organization, I go off to another company where they're simply not doing that. I mean, I would be totally lost. Where, where do I start? How do I organize? Well, you myself? wouldn't even be interested in talking to them, right? Probably not. Right. You know, it's, um, yeah, how am I supposed to manage my pipeline? How am I supposed to manage my day-to-day -day operation? So, yeah, I think you're seeing a, a new wave of young professionals who are coming into the market space who are very familiar with it. And, yeah. um, you know, it, it's becoming a norm within organizations today. Sure. Hey, if companies want to reach out to you, how can they... How can they contact you? How do they reach you? Yeah, absolutely. You can uh, you can find us on Salesforce's App Exchange, but just by simply searching Concept Ltd. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Joe Steffen. Um, you know, you can always visit conceptltd.com, which is our website, and fill out a form, and we'd be in touch with you right away. Um, I know our, our you have CRM working for you. We do have CRM working okay. for and digital marketing. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> test him out. Hey, test him out. Send in a form on the website. See how long it takes Joe to, yep. to respond. Absolutely. So, um, you know, a lot of different channels to, to reach me, um, you know, and uh, feel free to, to check out our website or our consultancy listing on the App Exchange. You'll find out a little bit more about our partnership there. Sure. Well, hey, thanks for coming in. I, I appreciate your of insight. Course. I think it was good. Hey, thanks for listening in. Um, I thought this would be a good show. There's a lot of companies. You may be one of them right now that's out there. You're in the process of either enhancing what you have, or maybe you're looking at bringing in a new uh, a new platform, or maybe a platform for the first time. So, hey, thanks for listening. If you like shows like this, hit subscribe. We have more shows coming. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. <music>